This is the Penn GSE podcast with perspectives on education and social science from the University of Pennsylvania's Graduate School of Education. I'm Tom Ketchkamethi. Today on the podcast, students in our teacher education program tell us how they're feeling about their first day of teaching in an urban school. Terrified. Terrified. I'm terrified, that's for sure. We'll look at how aspiring city teachers can overcome that terror, or at least keep it a little better hidden. Stay tuned. All new teachers are at least a little scared on their first day of school. That fear can be particularly intense for new teachers in urban schools. If you've never walked or driven through a major city, especially the poor areas of a city, looking at neighborhood schools, check them out sometime. These can be intimidating places. The buildings are often really large. There might be bars on windows or heavy metal doors. Some resemble prisons. Many even have a police presence. We had examples in the past where students would show up in the urban school in a very high poverty neighborhood and call their parents and say, I want to go home. I, you know, this looks horrible. Kathy Schultz is director of teacher education here at Penn GSE. She was a professor here 10 years ago, back when our program placed student teachers in some urban schools, but mostly in the suburbs. Some of the students who wound up at big city schools felt unlucky. Kathy remembers one of those students standing on the steps on the first day of school and calling her mom. Her mother called up the director of teacher education and said, why are you sending my child to this school? And we realized that that failure was really ours, that we hadn't prepared her to go to the school on the first day. This girl had a lot in common with most of our teacher ed students. By far the greatest number of students are white and middle class and come from suburbs. For students from this kind of background, walking into an urban school can be like waking up in a foreign country where you don't speak the language. Kathy and her colleagues recognize that without a tour guide or travel book in a situation like this, any one of us would be lost. That's when they decided to make some serious changes to our teacher ed program, including placing all of our student teachers in urban public schools and bumping up the start of our school year by two months, from September to July. And what we're hoping to do with our summer program is give the students who may not understand um, what it means to, to live and grow up and be educated in a high poverty environment, another way to read that landscape. And this neighborhood used to be all white, even down here, all white. Mm -hmm. And now it's all mixed. The very first thing the students do to get a feel for the neighborhood where they'll be teaching is to literally take a tour. I live right over there in that brick house with the white door. Lena Davis is a crossing guard at the Alexander Wilson School in West Philadelphia. Our teacher ed program recruited Lena to show the neighborhood to student teachers who will be at Wilson in the fall. She warns them about the not so good stuff. If you ever um, like take the kids out for a walk, the guys hang on the corner and sell drugs there. Shootings and stuff has occurred. Mm -hmm. But her emphasis is on the good stuff. The rec center, churches, murals, gardens, the best Jamaican restaurant in town. I've been going there for years. So you know what? We'll go back to the school then. The last stop on the tour is the Wilson School. In preparation for the school year, the students will spend mornings volunteering in a summer program there. Throughout the summer, our student teachers will help kids learn all sorts of things, like bike repair, gardening, and African-American rituals. The idea behind the summer program is to immerse students in the neighborhoods where they'll be teaching, to help them see beyond the boarded-up buildings and abandoned homes, and to notice the resources that neighborhoods have to offer. After Lena's tour, the students slated to teach at Wilson seem much less nervous. I was sort of expecting worse. And you know, and I guess I feel bad yeah. that I was expecting worse. I would say that it's it it feels very warm and inviting. When we went around the block, people were talking to you, they're on their porches. It feels very homey. It makes you really want to get into the classrooms and work with their children. That kind of response is exactly what Kathy Schultz is looking for. And she hopes this enthusiasm will encourage students to rethink other misconceptions they may have had about urban education. Often, students come to classrooms thinking that um, 
children can't do math when, in fact, they might have a lot of responsibility in their family to go and buy bread and milk and so they can make change, but they might not be able to do the addition in a traditional way in school because they haven't had fancy preschools that have taught them how to do that. Same goes for reading, science, any subject really. Throughout the summer, student teachers prepare for the classroom, taking courses on the foundations of teaching and learning, on poverty, on human development. But the thing is, when the fall rolls around, Kathy holds the students back a little bit. She has them ease in, observing and helping out in the classroom. And she gets a lot of questions like this. So when are you going to tell us what to do? When are we going to get to take the whole class? I don't want to just read to three students. Kathy says that for some students, in the beginning, it's enough of a challenge to walk their kindergartners to the bathroom in an orderly line. We believe that teaching isn't simply imitating an experienced teacher, but it's understanding from knowledge about students how to make the kind of decisions you need to make as a teacher. And in order to do that, we want to give them the luxury of uh, observation and reflection and really paying attention to how, how learning occurs. The slow pace also gives our younger students time to develop into adults. I always tell the student teachers that when I was a student teacher at um, 22 years old, I didn't feel like an adult in my regular life, but I had to be an adult in front of my class. And I used to stand in front of a mirror and practice looks so that I could look across the room and get somebody to sit down. And they need to learn those kinds of things. They do learn those kinds of things gradually. And as they do, they get more responsibility until eventually they're leading an entire class. And that's when it really clicks. Kathy's seen it happen in some of her students' journals. They write these wonderful things like, at um, 1.30 on Tuesday, I became a teacher. Once they have that I'm a teacher feeling, Kathy says, her students have finally gotten a grasp of not only how rewarding teaching can be, but how complicated it is. And that it's definitely not about going into an impoverished neighborhood thinking you're the one to save it. It's not very useful to go into teaching simply to change the world or to be the person to do good because then you're not validating all that the student and parents and community are doing at, at, at the same time. One big problem in urban schools is that teachers don't stay in schools long enough. They go in, it's too difficult, and they leave. And we believe that it's very important for teachers to stay for a few years. I mean, we know that the veteran teachers of 20 and 30 years in the past rarely exist these days. But we do want them to feel well prepared to teach in districts like Philadelphia so that they can be part of transforming urban schools into places that give opportunities for children. Our teacher ed students begin their work in Philadelphia public school classrooms when the school year begins after Labor Day. By Labor Day next year, they'll be teachers in their own classrooms, and many of them will take on leadership roles in their schools, like helping to develop alternative curricula. You can learn more about what Kathy and the rest of our teacher ed faculty think it takes to prepare urban school teachers at tep.gse.upenn.edu. The Penn GSE Podcast is a production of the University of Pennsylvania's Graduate School of Education and is produced by Hilary Frank. Trevor DeClerc wrote our theme music. I'm Tom Ketchkemethy. To learn more about this project and others, go to gse.upenn.edu.